Okay, look, I might be a day late for January's prompt, but you know what? That just means more for February. Okay, let's get into it. We're just gonna draw a little ant down here in the corner. It is honestly wild to me how much my <laughs> ant drawings have changed over time. Anyway, it is time for prompt number 151. And we have two kite and invisible man. All right, so as you can see, I've already sketched my invisible man. You can't see him because he, okay, sorry for the dad joke. Let's get to sketching some ideas. <laughs> this is my first prompt I've sketched in over a year, y'all. It's bad, it's bad, but let's do it. So our invisible man and kite, at first I was thinking an invisible man flying a kite. You know, let's get the basic ideas out of our head first. Instead, I drew an invisible man flying on a kite as if it's a skateboard and doing tricks on it in the air. Then I started to draw a dog because I was thinking, okay, maybe I should go back and draw just an invisible man flying a kite, but I wanna give him a dog so that we can have something interacting with this invisible man. And for some reason at this point, Marty thinking thinking about just making him naked. Invisible men are a thing, like a guy wearing a suit or he has bandages on, a scarf, sunglasses, a hat, things that make him known to exist. But I, I kind of wanted to approach the invisible man in a different way. So I just went naked with glasses apparently. This time I drew on clown glasses with a nose. I actually kind of really like this one. The dog ended up sort of floating. So I was like, you know what? Maybe he could be holding his dog and it looks like a dog is floating next to him. And then he's just holding the kite like it's a balloon, I guess sort of going with the, the clown theme. Then I started to think, what is a more unique approach to an invisible man wearing clothing? And then I started to think, what would happen if an invisible man got tattoos? The skin itself, I mean, if we have to get really technical when it comes to the invisible man, I don't even know where to begin. At what point does the pee become invisible when it leaves your body? Is it invisible? Are you just like a bucket of pee and poo floating around? It's not technically part of your cells, but it's inside of your body. Is it just everything that goes inside of your body that's invisible or is it everything that is your cells? See, once you start to get technical, I feel like I'm going off topic, but at the same time, this is very relevant and important to my drawing of uh, an invisible man. Anyway, back to what I was talking about. Tattoos on an invisible man. If an invisible man got a tattoo, would it just be a tattoo floating around? Technically, it's not part of his body, but it is his body stained. So in my rules, I'm saying that the tattoos aren't invisible. So there's just this invisible man walking around with floating tattoos, which would look really cool, I think, in CGI. But I wanted to approach this illustration in a way that I still drew him. So he's sort of transparent-y. Oh, and I guess I also drew a suit, invisible man, to keep it classic. So I ended up going with the tattooed invisible man, even though I was kind of in love with the invisible man with the clown glasses. That one was kind of silly, but something I want to get better at is covering people in tattoos. I have a really hard time with just covering people with random objects. I guess I also never mentioned that the kite is one of the tattoos. So anyways, as you can see, I also added a cat and a dog interacting with the invisible man because I wanted there to be obviously more on the page. I guess I could have done a background, but I really wanted the focus of this illustration to be this invisible guy with tattoos. We added a fun little kitty cat and dog because I like to draw cats and dogs and I thought it would also be interesting to see what it's like to have pets as an invisible person. Do they smell you? Do they feel you? Do they, I don't I don't know. Do they ever get scared because you're invisible? I'm realizing I have a lot of questions about the uh, whole invisible man situation. Moving on to inking this piece, I had the idea to actually ink the invisible man with blue ink instead of black just to make him look more transparent and my goodness was it the best decision ever. I've been wanting to play around with color line work more and more these days, but I, I always forget when it comes to actually inking the piece. I think using colored pencils would be really nice just because there are so many different options for colors, but I'm a sucker for nice clean black line art. What can I say? So I inked the animals normally with black. I inked the tattoos with black because I wanted them to look like tattoos and stand out from our invisible man, but our invisible man is inked with a blue micron. And I also used my dotted technique just to make him look even more 
not solid. I think if I had used black ink, it would have not ruined this piece, but making the blue line work really helped keeping the Invisible Man a little more subtle. And I mean, look at him, he looks invisible, especially once the color goes down. There's no denying it. I'd like to see you try. Before we continue talking about the painting and coloring of this illustration, I wanted to quickly talk about the new intro. I'm sure some of you, at least regulars, notice there is a new intro to the prompt. Every 50 prompts, I, I'm calling it a new season for some reason. I think it all began with the new intro. I think I was just getting bored of it and wanted to make a new one and I was getting close to 50 prompts and said, okay, every 50 prompts, I'm going to change the intro. It's a new season. I started off by browsing the music library in YouTube, just listening to songs in the beginning, how they intro, how they start different parts of the song, and just seeing if they inspired any sort of short five second intros in my head. And when I heard this song, I immediately just, I could just see an explosion of drawings coming out of a book, obviously the 500 drawing prompt book. And at first I was just sketching little inky ghosts coming out of the book to get a feel for how I wanted this explosion of things coming out out felt and then when I saw these little inky ghosts coming out I loved them and I was still thinking in my head that I was going to add some I guess little nods from previous prompts like characters and creatures and things I've created ants coming out of the book and I just didn't because I liked our little ghosties <laughs> and I also use the sketching usually when I do animations I do a rough sketch and I'll go back through and clean them up but I kind of like the way this rough animation sketchy inky look looked so I kept it like this. I think it's fun. It creates a nice vibe for the intro. And usually I had the number of the prompt really prominent, but I have it as a very light blurred shadow behind the creatures. And when they fly away, it makes the number disappear. I think it's cool. I think it's classy. And that is the new prompt intro. Hopefully it won't be around for too long. I'm thinking if I only did one a month, it would take me several years to get through this. I feel inspired lately. I think I'm going to try to do more than one a month. Yeah, here we are already behind. So I guess we'll see. Anyways, to color this piece, I did something that I don't normally do. Usually I'm one of those people that has a drawing of a character on a white piece of paper with maybe a spot of color behind them. But I thought because this is an invisible man, I would reverse that and I would color the page and then leave a white circle in the background. I wanted the invisible man. Oh God, how many times have I said invisible man so far? This voiceover, it's too many. I wanted the Invisible Man to be interacting with different things behind him, but in a simple way so that you could see what was going on without it being too complicated. So a background color in a white circle where you can see the color behind the Invisible Man, but also he's invisible behind the white. I realize this means he's not completely invisible, but like I said, I just, I wanted there to be something to draw. So let's pretend the Invisible Man has the ability to go invisible, invisible, and this is him mid transformation. There you go. I'm actually really happy with how the Invisible Man effect turned out. It just adds a little something to look at instead of being completely invisible. The way the body interacts with things around it, I think is really fun, or it was at least a lot of fun to create in color and paint. I also stuck with my typical yellow and blue scheme. I do that a lot in my illustrations. I just really like the way yellow and blue and orange go together. What can I say? And and at the end, I, I kind of liked the illustration, but I just felt like the top right corner was very empty. I really didn't know what to put there. I was thinking long and hard about it. Probably should have just put like, I don't know, a pet bird up there. But I kind of felt like doing more invisible overlapping colors and stuff. So I threw down a yellow speech bubble. I don't know, there's some sort of deep meaning about the invisible man having an invisible speech bubble. Can he be heard? Oh, Oh, wow, it's so deep, so many meanings. What does it mean? I'll never tell you because I don't know. And that, that's the prompt. prompt 
was, oh gosh, what was it? Ceiling fan, oil spill, and yo-yo. Quite a jumble of words, but y'all are so creative. Each of these is so different on its own. But let's talk about our featured artist, Cade No. Sorry if I said your name wrong, but your illustration is so magical. I don't know what it is. When I saw it, I feel like I was in the middle of a children's storybook with a very fun and adventurous magical story behind it, and I want to know more. If you too want to share your prompt for Invisible Man and Kite, hashtag Casey the Prompt on Twitter and Instagram, and you can get featured here on the, the end of the video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!